Hello, everyone. We are going to get started in just a couple minutes. So welcome. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Go over some quick Zoom ground rules, which I know you're all very familiar with, but if you're not speaking, just make sure you mute. We've not set tonight up as a webinar because we find it offers more authentic engagement if we're able to see each other. For those who want to be on camera, of course, it's fully optional. We'll leave the chat um, uh, function available so that we can communicate with each other. And we're going to have lots of time for Q&A as today goes on. So let us get started here. My name is Michael Aiken. I'm proud to be working with the college to help um, with the facilitation of these community meetings. This is the first meeting. We'll have plenty more as the summer turns into fall, and we're really excited that you're all here to engage with us. We're going to start with a little introduction and overview to the college, then we'll jump in to more about what a facilities master plan is and what the engagement's going to look like and what we're hoping to get out of all of you in terms of input tonight. But before we do any of that, I want to turn it over to Mr. Sherwin Collette to provide the official greeting from the college and set the stage a little bit about Montgomery College, and then I will come right back. So, Mr. Collette, the floor is yours. Hi. Uh, thank you, Michael. Hi, good evening, and welcome, everyone. I thank you all so very much for taking the time to be with us this evening. Um, my, as, uh, as introduced, I'm Sherwin Collette. I'm the Senior Vice President for Administrative and Fiscal Services. And among the functions and roles that I play, uh, I have the, the great pleasure of, of helping with my team and our partners at Canon and Link in leading the development of the facilities master plan. Um, you know, I'm, I'm truly excited to be with you. We feel very, very confident that we have a very strong team. Um, and it is really very important in this forum and, and others to come that we hear from you um, and uh, we orient ourselves uh, uh, to this process. And so tonight we have the opportunity to both onboard and orient you and begin that process of engagement. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to give an overview of uh, who we are in Montgomery, uh, Montgomery College, whom we serve, uh, seek to serve, and as part of uh, our overall community. Uh, so next slide, please. Thank you. So as, as you know, we're the, the Maryland's largest community college with close to 40,000 students across three campuses and uh, and and work beginning to plan for a fourth campus in in the east in the east county eastern portion of the county. Uh, many of our students are part time, about uh, a quarter of whom receive of our students receive federal financial aid through the Pell Grant uh, program. Our annual tuition and fees are uh, the most affordable uh, option we believe for our county residents. And one of the testaments to this affordability and accessibility uh, is to our, our, the rich programs that we provide here across the college. Um, our student body is, is diverse as, and reflective of our, of our overall county community uh, from the types of degrees and certificate programs that, that, are, uh, that are taken and, and consumed. Uh, we are of and for Montgomery County, and that's very important for me to, to highlight. Um, and certainly we, we couldn't be more proud uh, to serve our students each and every day. Uh, today, we, we are beginning, as I noted at the top, to introduce the master planning uh, process and we'll introduce our partners, uh, consulting partners. Uh, we'll spend some time highlighting for you the, the process, um, engage you in terms of where we are at, at the current state um, and provide an opportunity, we, we hope, for uh, intake and give and take and along, along the way, we will we will invite your participation. So it's not just about sitting out there in the in the Zoom land and, and listening, but we really want to engage and uh, invite your invite your thoughts. Um, so please feel free to provide your your candid feedback. And uh, in this way, we're able to plan for the future. And as we think about this facilities master planning process having just completed a, an update of our strategic plan. This is an opportunity as we cast our gaze over the next 10 years to, to think about uh, what we aspire to be, how we continue to serve and enrich the, the, the county, uh, and your input as part of that process is very, very helpful. So um, we'll certainly use the polling along the way and um, 
uh, that our, our colleagues at Canon uh, will certainly provide some background for you on. Um, and so we've, we've, I think we've got some really great uh, speakers today, and I'm, I'm going to ask them uh, to in introduce themselves. Um, you, you see my uh, very handsome photo up there. Um, uh, but in addition to that, if I ask uh, Carrie to begin. So Carrie. Well, we we'll welcome you to this evening and look forward to your input. Michael. Absolutely. Thank you, Sherwin. I'm Michael Aiken. I'm with Link Strategic Partners. Our job in this whole process is to be the group that makes sure that community and stakeholder feedback is captured and heard and used in this process. So I've got a number of my colleagues on the screen with us today, and we're going to be capturing all the great feedback from the chat and throughout the process to make sure that stakeholder engagement remains a core pillar. And Montgomery College has been great about making that commitment, and we'll, we'll carry that forward. I'll turn it over to the other Michael on the screen, Michael Glaros, who will lead us through the next steps of this after he introduces his team. All right. Well, it's so nice to be here and to meet many of you for the first time and to see some familiar faces from our previous engagements. So it's uh, it's great to be on board. I'm Mike Glaros with Can Design. Uh, I'm leading this planning effort along with my colleague, Francis Fox, who is also here. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. And I think we have a couple of our other teammates also on the line, but they will remain anonymous for now. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, Canon Design is a firm that's been around for 100 years, and we, we started the firm doing education projects, and we still love to do them today. So um, we believe in uh, the community college systems, especially here in Maryland, uh, and have spent a lot of time working in them. So we're happy to bring that experience and a little bit of innovation to this process. So um, as we get started, we wanna learn a little bit about you. Um, we wanna find out who's in the audience with us and we're gonna use a couple of tools to help us get there. Um, you can see in the corner of the screen, a QR code if you would like to use your smart device to uh, click on that. It will bring you directly to our polling. Uh, you can also use the web address that is up at the top of the screen. Uh, and I think, Francis, are you going to pop that into the chat as well? So Yes, I just dropped the link. All right, great. So in the chat, you can see uh, the link. So we'll use this polling software throughout the, the presentation to gather input. But uh, when we get to the Q&A section, we'll also use the chat function and the, um, and the open mic. Um, so. I see we've got already 34 people who have logged in. If you're having any trouble, um, just let us know and we will help try and help you guide you there. But And just a note, if you're using, if you use the link and you're using your web browser, you'll have to click back to the Zoom to see the live results. Um, so you'll need a dual screen um, as you go. Thank you. Thanks, Francis. All right, so our first que question, how long have you lived in Montgomery County? All right. So we've got some longtime residents, some newcomers to the county, and a few who don't live in the county. That's great. All right. And our next question, have you ever attended classes at Montgomery College? All right. We've got a bunch of people who took classes long ago. That's awesome. All right. And have you worked at Montgomery College? All right. We've got quite a few people who still do. And then, uh, do you live near a campus, Tacoma Park, Silver Spring, Rockville, Germantown, or the yet-to-be-identified East County location? All right, so a lot of people living near the Rockville campus. It's interesting, these numbers probably reflect also the number of students on each of the campus by proportion.
All right. And then uh, have you ever had experience in a previous planning meeting with Montgomery College? Have you attended one of the public meetings previously or been engaged in, in any of the, the planning processes for any of the projects that are ongoing? All right. We have a lot of newcomers. Well, welcome to you all. So uh, the first question that we're going to try and answer for you is, uh, what is a facilities master plan? So a facilities master plan is a document that is required by the state of Maryland every 10 years by all of the institutions in the state of Maryland. Um, it's intended to establish a framework that really reflects the mission and, and vision of the institution uh, in terms of capital development over a course of a 10 year period. So it looks at enrollment, it looks at space needs, and it looks at what initiatives might drive the need for uh, any new construction on campuses or any investments in renovations. Um, it also uh, tries to address some of the, uh, the connections between the institution and the surrounding community, which is one reason why we're here today. So this planning process will include uh, an evaluation of all the existing facilities on campus, uh, an understanding of the utilization of those facilities, how many classes are taken in what buildings, and how many people are coming and going from the campus, and project future needs from those, um, from those data points. Uh, it will also provide that overview and connectivity to many of the planning documents that the institution has developed, including you know, the overall mission and, and vision, uh, as well as the academic plan, enrollment plans, and, and other documents that are intended to provide guidance to the institution as it looks forward. Um, it will also create an implementation strategy, looking at how these projects can be uh, brought online uh, in a sequence that makes sense in terms of keeping continuous operations and expanding opportunities for the students in the community. So it is a very high level document. Uh, it does summarize a lot of the, the other documents that have been created by the institution, and it does create that concept for future facilities needs. But it is not a highly detailed document that dives into um, the very specifics of the design of buildings or uh, what the details of them are. That comes further down the road. So um, the current master plan that was developed almost a decade ago at this point showed a pattern of development based on the, the projected needs that were established back at that time. And, and it developed a concept for each of the three campuses, um, some of which has already been implemented. So at Tacoma Park in Silver Springs, this is what the campus looked like back in 2013. Um, since then, uh, the 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 site has been cleared for the math and science building, which is currently under construction. So of all of those things that were sort of identified in the previous uh, plan, um, currently there are two that are almost nearing completion. They'll be done in early 2024. The first is the uh, Leggett Math and Science Building, and the second is the Resource Center Library Renovation, which is currently underway. On the Rockville campus, you can kind of see what the pattern of, of buildings was at the time. And since then, there's been a bit of progress. So the Science West was renovated really early in this, uh, this time period. The North Garage was constructed, as well as the Student Services Center, which is now open and thriving. Also during this time period, the soccer field was renovated, as well as a concessions building constructed. And still forthcoming over the next couple of years planned out, um, there are two projects that are both renovation projects. One is for the Macklin Tower, and it is a library renovation. And the other is for the Theater Arts Building, which is planned to have a renovation and expansion. On the Germantown campus, um, there has been uh, quite a flurry of activity around STEM facilities. So the Biosciences Education Building was constructed as well as the, um, the Student Affairs Building was renovated for science, at least the first phase of it. There is a still a second phase forthcoming. So that is kind of identified here as part of the projects that are forthcoming in the next five or seven years. 
Um, so the completion of that renovation will occur after the new student services center is constructed. And there's also early plans for a renovation and uh, of the baseball facility, which is on campus already. And beyond that, there is some early planning that's underway for an expansion of the East County campus uh, presence. Uh, so the education center uh, will be open this year and begin um, classes in the next academic year. And there's also early planning for the development of a broader campus uh, within the East County area. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule for this master plan. We have a four step process and we're still kind of in that first step, starting to move into the second step. The first step we call the discover phase. That's a period where we do things like this. We reach out to constituency groups, both on and off campus. Um, we hold workshops and gather information. We read a lot of reports and we look at a lot of drawings. And um, we delve into statistics to try and get a baseline understanding of the institution today. Um, from here, we're going to move into a period we call the develop phase, where we identify themes and concepts that we think will carry the plan forward and are really the basis for the decisions that we make as we go forward. After that, as we get into the summertime, we'll get into um, the detail phase, where we really develop the plan identify the specific projects, test out the, um, the viability of those projects, and yeah. um, identify the sequence of them so that we can be sure to maintain the operations of the, of the institution throughout the period of the plan. And then um, as we get into the fall, we will actually deliver and finalize uh, the report. Uh, the report is due to the, uh, the state early next year, uh, and so we need to make sure that it is uh, finalized and approved by the Montgomery College Board of Trustees before it moves to the state um, in the winter. So with that, we have a number of uh, additional engagements planned for the community, which you should be starting to see notices for some of these as they, uh, as they get scheduled and finalized. Um, but we have a number of additional meetings specific around each of the campuses, the Rockville, the Germantown, Tacoma Park and Silver Springs, as well as the East County um, campus. Uh, that'll all happen over the next month, month and a half. And then um, as we get towards the fall, we will schedule a time to come back and, and greet you all with uh, the results of what we've determined um, through all of this process and give you a presentation of the draft. So um, we've been on campus for a couple of months, held a number of workshops, gathered a lot of information, done a student survey, uh, started a faculty survey, uh, and we have some just very initial observations to share, um, using these essentially as a springboard for the conversation we'd like to have tonight. Uh, so on the Tacoma Park and Silver Spring campus, um, you know, it is located, the Tacoma Park side is located in a residential neighborhood, which is adjacent to uh, a historic district. Uh, the Silver Spring side is highly visible from, you know, Georgia Ave and major thoroughfares and is uh, a, a fairly urban setting. Uh, there is an existing MOU that provides guidance for uh, the development, uh, is particularly on the Tacoma Park side of the campus. And this campus, of course, is bifurcated by uh, the rail line, as well as the jurisdictional lines between Silver Spring and Tacoma Park. Um, this campus, because of its tight uh, nature, uh, is primarily serviced with, serv with uh, structured parking. So most of the parking is contained within two garages, although there are a couple of small uh, surface lots. Uh, there are limited opportunities for recreation and athletics on the campus, although there is an adjoining park, which is available um, for use by everyone, um, but there is only a small fitness center uh, kind of in the center of campus. Um, there are some issues. The original Tacoma Park buildings are, are inefficient uh, and difficult to navigate and orient. Uh, the campus itself is located pretty proximate to I-495, depending on the time of day. So at 5 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning, it's a little bit more of a drive, but uh, in the middle of the day, it's only about 10 minutes. 
Uh, it's also proximate to quite a number of uh, transit stops and modes of, of getting to the area. The Rockville campus uh, is the largest campus, um, and it has a limited street presence. Uh, essentially, it's set back from the roadways uh, and sort of contained uh, within its boundaries. Uh, it is set next to a series of residential neighborhoods, and it is a campus that has a really formal uh, collegiate quad, as you might call it, running through the middle of campus. There is limited room for expansion on this campus. You can see that much of the acreage is already uh, well in use. Uh, about a third of the campus is used for buildings and grounds. About a third of the campus is used for parking. And about a third of the campus is used for um, either athletics or natural and preserved land in a woodlands. So the, the land is quite well used right now. Uh, and there is a significant amount of recreation and athletic facilities on this campus. Uh, although the, the buildings are quite close together, the density is actually relatively modest considering the scale of the buildings ranges from two to three stories. Uh, there is mostly surface parking on campus, although there is one structured facility which was completed in the last uh, few years. Uh, there are pretty easy access to this campus from I-270. Uh, there are actually two exits that are only about seven to 10 minutes away as well as access to multiple bus lines that pass by. The Germantown campus is uh, considered the most bucolic campus. It has a lot of topography, so there's a lot of up and down on the campus, which also creates the opportunity for nice views. Uh, there are large areas of forest conservation on the campus, and currently it is serviced only by uh, surface parking. Uh, there are a number of uh, architectural styles on campus, and it has kind of evolved over the last few years, and it too is readily accessible to I-270 with a couple of uh, exits that are only within five minutes away. On the East County, uh, you know, we, we haven't really begun digging into that uh, as much yet, but it is an area that has a, a generous population. It is a bustling part of the county. Uh, and it is relatively proximate to the Tacoma Park and Silver Spring campus. Um, so it's an opportunity to really expand access to many residents of the county. So as we've been having some of these early conversations, we've started to think about some themes and drivers that are going to help us guide the process. Um, so beginning with you know, the mission of the institution, academic delivery, What's changing? What's happening there? What is making, uh, you know, uh, what is going to impact the plan as we look forward in terms of how students are taking classes and how they use space? Um, we're also thinking about uh, recruitment, retention, and student success and how we can enhance and support that as we move forward, as well as strengthening the brand and identity of the campus uh, and the college itself. Um, part and parcel of all of this is the rapid changes that have happened over the last five years. Uh, be they organizational or technological. So as we kind of think about what we want to do over the next 10 years uh, with the institution, we want to think about a couple of things. You know, what's changed since the ideas that were encapsulated in the last master plan were authored? Um, obviously, we've had the pandemic. We've had a rapid increase in, um, in technology, uh, but there are a lot of demographic changes, uh, changes in the economy that all are going to kind of impact how we think about the future. Um, we want to think about also a flexible plan over the next 10 years. Um, as we noted over the last five years, there's been tremendous changes and there'll be hard to predict what those changes will be as we look forward to the next 10 years. So we want to make sure that we're building flexibility uh, into our plan and thinking about um, how things can change and evolve. But we also want to think big. Uh, this is the time to kind of come up with an idea about the future of the institution and what its facilities need to be and kind of identify uh, that roadmap to get there. So with that as sort of context, we'd love to kind of engage you in some conversation. So again, uh, we're using the same um, polling software. Uh, if you're already logged in, you should already be there. Um, if you hadn't logged in yet, uh, here's an opportunity to either jump on the um, QR code or go through the link to the website. And as we go through these conversations, I want to um, 
encourage everyone to come off mic and uh, use your voices. Well, raise your hand and we'll take you off mic, I guess. Uh, and also use the chat feature. Uh, it's, it's a great way to communicate with us as well. So with that, I'm going to have Michael help us kind of guide the process here. Absolutely. I'm going to um, ask a few different questions. I'll also drop them in the chat. We can take these in any way you want, but I want to just kind of give some framing questions. For our college friends, we also got a question in the chat if someone could break down any of the enrollment numbers by campus, just to give a sense of how that's distributed. So if there's someone on the college side who would be able to address that, I know it might take a couple of minutes to pull that. I want to make sure we address that one as well. And if you're looking at the chat, I am going to also drop these questions in just to give you a sense of where we're going. And then Michael will share them one at a time and we'll have a really robust discussion. So we're going to be asking about the primary way you interact with the college's campuses, understanding that sometimes residential neighbors interact with the campus slightly different with someone who lives or works nearby. So we're trying to get a sense of that community interaction with the campuses. We'd also tonight like to get your feedback on how any of the communities may be shifting or evolving or changing around the campuses, right? The college has been here for, for a while. Communities change. How are we making sure that the college and their facilities are keeping up with some of those changes in the community? And how can we keep up with those evolving needs? For example, if your community has a higher need around healthcare resources because there's shortages of healthcare workers, the college probably has some programs around that, et cetera. We want to talk about that. And then are there newer, different ways that you're looking to interact with the college in the future? So that's what we're going to be covering over the course of tonight. But we wanted to start with that first one of what is the primary way that you interact with the college's campuses? see a bunch coming here on the screen and I see Carol has raised her hand. So Carol, we're going to take you off mute. Feel free to also come on camera if you're comfortable, but we'll make sure um, we're coming to you now. Go ahead, Carol. There you go. Um, okay. Uh, I just had two quick questions that yes, aren't really related to this, but sort of anyway. Um, <laughs> one is, do you have a sense of how long it takes for the state approval process to go through? And the second question is, I am involved with some projects to develop uh, organic gardens on both the Tacoma Park and Rockville campus and hopefully eventually on the e new East campus um, that would, first of all, provide um, produce and crops to support food insecurities among students, which is surprisingly high um, through our food banks. All the campuses have food banks for their students, um, but also to provide an opportunity to develop a learning classroom. And we have a huge interest among faculty, staff, uh, and student groups uh, to be involved with that. So I did want to make sure that um, that thought goes forward in the development of a master plan. Uh, there are also several community groups that have an interest in partnering with us. So, Excellent. yeah, so that's, uh, I just want to make sure that that gets in early and often. So thank you, Carol, uh, both, both good things. So the first question was around the timeline for yes. the state approval part of this. Mm -hmm. Who on the project team has an answer around that? What is the typical approval timeline on the state side of this? I'm guessing that is not something Mike has an answer to. So I'm going to need someone from the college to outline that for us, if possible. I was hoping Carrie would have the specific <laughs> timelines, but you know, it it is one of those things that does take a couple of months. It's not a it's not typically very well drawn out, but it starts in February. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't cannot remember from the last time how how long it took, but you know, it's sort of like any agency review it takes what it takes and they don't give you a time frame um it's pretty open-ended okay great thank you thank you carol and you kicked us off well it was actually very on topic about how folks interact with the campuses right you talked about the farming and the learning platforms you tied yeah. it into food insecurity and a learning opportunity so that is completely in keeping and, and i'd love to build on that 
Looks okay. like there's some great stuff coming on the screen here. So educate continuing education campus, campuses, the I'm sorry, continuing education classes, the pool facilities have come up both on screen and in the chat. Um, folks talk about living near the campuses or working at the campuses. Um, I'm a professor. I drive to campus from PG County to teach as a full-time faculty member. I live near the campus. We're seeing here in the chat, some folks don't currently interact with the college campuses. So if you're not currently interacting, are there things you would like to interact with the college around is a question we're gonna be getting to here in a bit. We're seeing the pool facilities come up a couple different times. Thank you, Sarah is offering some detailed notes about the teaching gardens, which is great. Any other answers to this about primarily how you're interacting with the college campuses currently? Perfect. Our teen enjoys the ability to swim. So pool's coming up again. The parent of a swimmer on a club swim team meet that runs pool time. Um, oh, excellent. There's a comment here from Montgomery County, White Oak planning manager, interested in finding out more about the East Campus planning schedule and looking forward to the East Campus Education Center. So that's fantastic. We'll make sure we provide information at the end of the slide about where we can get more information and, and make sure you're part of that planning process as well. Anything else on this one? Okay. Excellent. Cicero. Go for it. Good, good evening. And uh, thank you for, you know, hosting the meeting. Uh, just wanted to mention to Carol, uh, because, you know, she spoke about, you know, teaching the farming, I believe it might be vertical farming, but uh, also food insecurity. And I just wanted to mention that in East County, we have several organizations, most of them church organizations like the Kingdom Fellowship, uh, the Rainbow Community, that assist the county tremendously with uh, food banks and distributing the food. So, you know, hopefully once uh, we get things moving on East County, we can, you know, uh, think about that also we're there on the East County campus because that would be, I think, uh, you know, there would be a lot of synergy with some of the organizations in East County. So I just wanted to mention that to uh, Carol. That's fantastic. Thanks for putting that in the space. Those, those partnership opportunities, it's great to hear them here. Mike, in keeping with that, can we go to the next question? Mm -hmm. Because the next question is looking at how have the communities around the college campuses changed? And we're not expecting anyone to be like the data folks that said, well, this many people have moved here and here, just as you live and work around our campuses, are there emerging needs that the college should be aware of? Have the communities changed in a way that you can say, well, this retail strip near this college campus is really frequented by students, but you know, more restaurants would be great there to serve. Just anything that would give us a context for the communities that we should have as we're doing our, our facilities master planning. So go ahead, same way, you can use the polling software. You can also use the chat or you can come on screen for anything you think we might need that would be contextual for the planning process for the various campuses that we're planning around. We recently um, presented at the um, Tacoma Park um, County Council meeting, and there was a lot of interest there around what the trends were in healthcare and the shortage of nurses, et cetera, and how the college might be um, building nursing facilities or labs or, or, or having more programs for teaching. So anything like that fits in this space as well, just anything that you're seeing. Excellent, we're seeing some stuff in the chat here. Okay, excellent. Maker spaces could be a community and student draw. And then someone built on that and said, maker spaces would be a great addition to the college. There's a dearth in the area. I know there was a maker space in the Rockville campus, but I don't know if it's open or still available to the community. We've seen in the chat here, greater population density in some of our surrounding communities and increased diversity in our student population, increasing urbanization and traffic. The county is more diverse, students are under more pressures, the pandemic has really flattened social lives in the communities. Um, there's also a lot of national research about how uh, community college students specifically bore a lot of the disproportionate brunt of some of the, the pandemic learning loss and, and familiar pressures, et cetera. Fair amount of vacant commercial space near the Rockville campus. Difficult to walk to cafes and coffee from Rockville without having to walk on 395. 
Hearing that again, lack of walkable food and coffee options near Germantown and Rockville, limited hours for cafeterias, lots of traffic near East Campus, increased population, challenges for students to travel to campus, underutilized parking and a lot owned by MCPS adjacent to the Rockville campus, more need for access to rec and fitness facilities, community access to fitness, outdoor fitness centers, tennis and pickleball, increasing population, um, around the Germantown campus with new housing developments. We're seeing in the chat, is there a way to use commercial condo spaces near the Rockville campus right along three? This is 355. Yep, 355. There's a need for more third spaces and places to gather outside. So for those who don't know that term, third spaces are like, you've got your home, you got your work, you got your home and your classroom. Where's that third space that you can go and, 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 and socialize or study that might be outside of either of those places? Carlos has offered in the chat skilled trades, training facilities focused on technology, such as building automation. Um, there's a question around the college's compliant with state law that requires public institutions of higher education to provide bicycles and pedestrian circulation elements. So those transportation elements on campus. Sarah offers that we need to be mindful of how we're serving the broader community due to the drops in enrollments that community colleges can be seeing. Excellent here. Um, keep scrolling down here a little bit. These are really interesting. So students appear to be seeking opportunities to have connections with others to repair reduced opportunities from the pandemic. We're seeing an influx of immigrants and English classes are vital and the funding for more support specialists are needed. Safe dining options within walk, uh, walking distance near the west side of the Tacoma Park campus. There are so many educated adults in our area who would love to teach and be involved as mentors. Some nice community connections there. Rockville needs bus stops on both sides of the campus. Um, in the chat, we talk about serving the community with arts events and job fairs. There's a, an observation that there seems to be a shift into online courses as we're seeing fewer students on campus than previously, and that there's an opportunity for in, improved dining. We will capture all of these. Anything missing from this list or anyone have an observation they'd like to make verbally or, or on screen? Or do you think we've captured most of it? Perfect. Okay, future East County campus could benefit from PhDs from the FDA. Need better connections to Rockville Town Center, both physical and programmatic connections. There's a need for mental health facilities and teaching about coping skills. Starting to see many of how these, these connect together. Getting some love for the FDA angle in the chat here. I would point out that we need to draw students back to our campus with great offers. Spaces for students to access remote learning. Excellent. Uh, the FDA uh, got a follow-up comment that USDA can contribute to in the East Campus. These are great. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I put I posted the um, comment about the uh, about um, compliance with state law. Um, uh, Ten years ago, I was involved with Rockville's um, Bicycle Facilities Master Plan and was part of a um, of a bicycle advisory committee. And we put a lot of work into bicycle and pedestrian elements connected with Rockville and were very disappointed when the Facilities Master Plan came out. There was really no mention of hardly any mention of bicycle and pedestrian. And so that led to a state law that requires public um, institutions of higher education to include bicycle and pedestrian master plans. I mean, circulation elements in their facility master plans. So I'm very interested um, to hear for, uh, for all campuses what the college will be doing to promote non-motorized transportation to the schools. I appreciate that, Michael. Um, and other Michael, look, we have three Michaels on that first row of the screen here. Michael, could you talk a little bit about how transportation elements may factor in to a facilities master plan? I wanna make sure we're, 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 we're providing this in the right framing because there's some really good feedback that was provided around that. 
Absolutely. We have a transportation consultant that is part of our team, and they will be doing a multimodal analysis uh, for all the campuses. So they will be looking at how public transit and transportation uh, provides accessibility to the campuses, what the needs of drivers are, but also uh, how facilities can be improved for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, you know, it, I will say that uh, bike paths and bicycles are a mainstream part of many four-year colleges because of the immediate proximity of students living on campus. Um, it is a little bit less uh, of an impact on community college campuses simply because many of the students are coming from 20 minute drives away, um, which is a harder to bike in for uh, classes. But once you get to campus and how can we connect to greater efforts across the county, all of those things will be looked at um, in the course of the project. Thank you. And you're seeing a lot in the, the feedback that's kind of seconding what we heard from Michael there. Um, seconding bicycle, bicycle path. Germantown has some bicycle paths near Seneca Valley High School, but none near the campus. 240 overpass is dangerous. Um, there's a, a, a note in here around the interest in bus access on the Georgia Avenue side um, and talking about how currently you have to take a bus to uh, Georgia Ave bus to Silver Spring Metro, then walk half an hour to get to the other campus and and kind of how those transportation paths may may not be as accessible as they might seem to be around campus. Um, um, yeah, so that was that was all there. I'm going to go to Mr. Kenneth. Kenneth, take it away, sir. Let me get you off mute here if we can. There you go. Interested in how the people on the faculty interact with some of the businesses around. I've heard a lot about the FBA people mentioned. Just another example, if you were at the, the, the kickoff for the East Campus, one of the prime speakers was the president of Adventist Hospital. Yep. And Adventist Hospital has, a, they, they perceived to have a large shortage in a lot of very highly, for highly qualified skilled people. And the question is, uh, how do we get the faculty and the, people in the surrounding areas like FDA and Adventist Hospital and different places like that mm -hmm. uh, together with each other. Or I'm, I'm a member, member of Friends of White Oak and we're trying to find ways, both sides wanna see it happen, but I don't know if they're, what, what the mechanism for creating that is. Excellent, Mike, um, excellent, Kenneth. I, I appreciate that and if, if Anyone um, uh, from the college side has an has an observation and an answer from that. By all means, jump in. I know through these upcoming planning process meetings we're going to have, they're going to be very campus specific meetings as well, where there's going to be that um, dedicated outreach to some of the interest around the campus, whether they be healthcare or business, etc. So we could use everyone's help in making sure that those invites get to the right folks, so we can start some of those dialogues. But um, it's it's an absolutely key point. Yeah, you know, I have, I did talk, but I have been talking with Stephen Kane, so he, he's been very helpful. So that excellent. That's that's tie that knot a little tighter. I would like to <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Will do, and and you know those those are great opportunities for partnership. If we can get a really good sense of what business and industry need and are doing, why not try and generate some of that in our backyard here, which is great. And some of our students in the East County could get very good jobs as well if they. Yep. We like to see that happen as well. Yep, absolutely. And that's great. Um, uh, on that that point about data, um, Sherwin started with an overview of kind of where the campus is currently. I think a lot of times folks will live near or drive by or walk by an institution and not have a full understanding of what's happening on the campus side. So as we go deeper in these meetings, I think we've got a real opportunity to unpack some of that. So if we're hearing that interest in health science fields, what's happening on the campus around that and how do facilities support it, we can bring some of those in. And that's a, a good reminder that our first question tonight was about the population on each campus. And we're still gonna need to answer that one. So if anyone has those numbers handy or could get them, I wanna make sure we come back to that. Michael, could you scroll up on this? There were some really good ones that came in while we were, we were talking and I just wanna make sure we're getting them. More homeschooling families have high school students taking classes. We need health services similar to four-year schools. STEM has flourished at Rockville. Well, arts can struggle with outdated facilities. 
need more labs, hands-on trade skill, more swim hours for the community. Please look at the rock far, rock. Sorry, <laughs> please look at the King Farm Farmstead in Rockville. The city owns the property, but it's been vacant for many years. Could be an, a unique opportunity to partner. Seeing some kudos in the chat around the health services. There's some bus rapid transit planning for Rockville and Germantown. There's much more demand than available spots for swim lessons for small children in the county pools, as well as life, lifeguard training for teens. MC could help fill this need, and there's a need for updated fitness centers in all three of the campuses. Excellent. This was really robust feedback. Michael, let's go to the next question here if we can. I only got a couple more here. This is, is very similar to the last question. So if you answered this in the last question, we'll just carry that forward. But we just want to make sure, again, that we're keeping up with the evolving needs of the community. So we asked you, how has the community changed? What are some of the shifts you've been seeing? This is kind of asking you to, to kind of put on that future forward look. As you look at the communities that you're part of, where do you see some of those emerging needs? Where do you see some of those things that we should be training our students for, that we should be supporting with our facilities and our labs and the way we do our arts programming? Anything around that that, that could be helpful for us as we dig into this planning? Same thing, chat, jump on screen, or go ahead and drop them into the polling software. Seeing the health services. Anything else here? Michael, it says Michael Chase has a comment. Yes, um, I have a one for comment it. about interacting uh, with the community um, in terms of um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, first, let me back up. I'm a biology professor here. We screen wastewater for uh, the virus here on the Rockville campus. And uh, one issue that I would like to know if it's possible is we need port access to the sewer system to do that. And ideally, we would like a um, sewer system that most of the campus drains into, that mm -hmm. we could gauge level of infectivity on the campus, which would be related to the community. Montgomery County government would want to know such things, I would assume, as well. So I, I think this is a pretty important thing you should consider. Right now, it's not too easy to uh, access sewer system, yep. uh, ideal one. Yep. The other thing really quick um, that I was thinking of, I don't know where this really fits in, but um, in terms of a power outage on all campuses, we should consider a backup system for these power outages. I've had the experience over the last few years of losing thousands of dollars of reagents and um, lab supplies because mm -hmm. of power outages, because we didn't have a backup system. Yep. I appreciate both of those, um, Mr. Chase. Um, um, uh, Mike, Mike G., how does things like resiliency and some of that sustainability planning and energy, how does that fit into master facility plans, if at all? Is that a section of what you're looking at? Absolutely. We're definitely going to be looking at um, the overall campus sustainability as the there are a number of mandates from state and local government that the, the college will need to address as it looks forward with its facilities. Whether those are in guideline or in physical facilities, um, we don't know yet, but the, there will be responses to those needs for sure. Um, and to address the, the question about the, the sewer system and the, the accessibility for testing and so forth, we do have a civil engineer on the team who can look at those kind of questions and, and come up with uh, an, an understanding of what it would take to accomplish that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Chase. In a completely different capacity than I'm playing here, I had the chance to chair the regional vaccine task force in the early days of the pandemic. And that wastewater monitoring type research is a very cutting edge and a lot of a lot of jurisdictions don't know how to take full advantage of it. So keep up the great, great work on that. It raised some additional comments in the chat here around um, upgrading air handling, cleaning capacity for public indoor settings and how that might factor in to an FMP. Are those types of things looked at, Mike? 
Yeah, the facilities are looked at in terms of their systems. Uh, this has actually already been undertaken by a separate consultant, and we're sort of consolidating those reports and we'll respond to it. But uh, the HVAC systems for all of the buildings are evaluated, and um, that will be reflected in the conditions summary that goes into the, the facilities master plan. Excellent. Thank you. These are great questions and observations, folks. So, so keep them coming. Seeing in the chat here that, um, you know, speaking of health services, the nursing department has announced two opportunities for students to have their tuition covered. I encourage the college to advocate similar opportunities through other hospitals, child care needs on Tacoma Park and Rockville campuses, fitness and wellness. We need to assure that we have open spaces and green spaces to support mental wellness. Um, We've got some folks here about folks who are, are part of uh, planning divisions in different parts of the city and really figuring out how to dial in and be supportive of this going forward. Um, there's an observation about how a meeting at College Park recently had UV light treatments going on in the room that we met in. Switching back to the polling software, be an example of sustainability. Look at Look with an eye towards native plants and sustainability. Keep the pools maintained. I asked about thinking in the future, and we've got here artificial intelligence, game development, life sciences, and where those industries are going and how we might be supporting our, our students with facilities around those. Um, act, actually listen to the communities and listen in the communities. In some instances, the college has turned its back to the community and ignores community suggestions and recommendations. My hope is what we're doing here tonight is is a really great step in that direction. And it's it's our job to make sure that community feedback is being heard. So keep them coming. And I appreciate the feedback here. Uh, studies have found that a key way to increase students wanting to attend a college is to offer state-of-the-art fitness facilities for them to use. Hearing that fitness theme throughout, there's a point here about more integration with the community, right? And doing a lot of this work around the country in, in town gown settings, the idea of colleges and, and communities being fully separate is the outdated way of doing this, right? How are we integrating is, is, is the way that we're all moving forward. So I love that, that comment there. The college needs to support community health, student health, faculty and staff health by providing equitable and updated fit, fitness facilities. So really that theme of how all of these things tie together. Love this. The more we integrate with the community, the more relevant we become. Excellent. Please listen to the comments here and circle back. The best way to keep up with our needs is to listen. Fully agree with that. You're speaking our language here. We believe very strongly in something called the feedback loop, where it's our job as this process goes forward to tell you what we've done with this feedback and how it's been integrated. So as we go through these next few months of planning together, make sure you're holding that to us. Um, great question in here that is is probably outside the scope of the FMP, but a great question, and I'd really welcome uh, whoever from the college might be able to address this, to, to address this near the end of the meeting. Why have community colleges experienced a drop in enrollment, and what is MC doing about that? We had a very similar question when we presented to the county council, so I'd love for the college, whoever can can jump on screen and answer that. We'll come back to that one in just a little bit. Okay, Mike, let's go to the next question and then we'll open it up for anything we've missed at this point. <clears throat> so what we were asking you, this one, we just, yeah, give me the next one there. Excellent. And this is, this is kind of our last big question here. Are there new ways that you as community members would like to interact with the college? So we've asked you how you've interacted. We've asked you how the community has shifted around it. We've asked about the evolving needs of the community and how Montgomery College can meet some of those needs. This is uh, another question around, as you think of how you'd like to interact with the college campuses, how would you like to use the campuses? How do you see yourself on them? Are there any new or different ways that we should put into the mix here about how you could interact with the college in the future that we haven't already captured? Same thing, we'll do chat, come on screen or do it in the polling software. <clears throat> Excellent. Co-produced theater. Oh, that's an interesting idea, Sarah. Thanks for throwing that in. Volunteer opportunities. I would love to teach or mentor. I would also like to take classes or go to events. 
I love the give and take in that answer. Here's what I'd love to offer to the college and here's where I could benefit. That's such a great way of approaching this. I, I love that. More field trips for elementary students, right? Getting that interest in college instilled early. I like that. Anything else we're missing here? Any other ways that you as community stakeholders would see yourself interacting with the college in the future? Excellent. Make living in Montgomery County more affordable to those who work at MC. More community art projects, either on or off campus. Campus hosts, campuses could host community events like 10K races, festivals, summer camps or homeschool educational opportunities for elementary through high school students, classes and projects with staff. I see Dr. Stewart came on camera. Maybe Dr. Stewart, when I pitch to you in just a second about the enrollment, you can talk a little bit about the high school level programming and partnerships you have too, because I think it addresses some of that. Installations and accessible areas that are experiential learning spaces. We have good summer camps already. I love the field trips for students. Collaborations with interfaith organizations. Excellent. These are great. Anything else we're missing on this one? Additional opportunities to interact with the college or the campuses or the facilities in the future. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take that question, David, and drop it into my data follow up that we're going to do in just a bit. So the question for the, the college team here is, do we know which um, which percentage of Montgomery College students are local high school students? More civic education for all training and federal contracts and jobs. Love the training and federal jobs I like how you're building on each other. Invite the public to do a field trip to credit and non-credit departments and have current students representing both sides to share their experiences. Increase open community opportunities to foster community relationships, such as seminars, festival, field events. Uh, develop programs where students can provide services to the community through events. Installations and accessible areas that are experiential learning spaces. Arts events in Rockville, if there are better multi-purpose spaces. More community art projects on or off campus. Summer camps, these are great. Good marketing to MCPS school students for any camps or opportunities. Anything else we're missing? These are fantastic. Uh, uh, there's a point raised about if we're going to bring more people to campus, make sure we're keeping that in the context of how we're addressing ventilation, et cetera. Would love to support students in a variety of ways. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Stewart, can I toss over to you, my friend? There was a question around enrollment trends in community colleges, kind of what we might be seeing and what the college might be doing around that, um, or, or anyone else who wants to take that one. I just saw Brad come on camera there. And then the other one was around how our enrollment uh, varies by campus and kind of how our enrollment is distributed. Who would like to, to take those? Michael, I can take a, um, a stab at... Uh... Uh, what's going on. I'll start with the, the last part of that first, because it's a little bit easier. Um, um, although it's not easy. Um, at Montgomery College, uh, we have credit students who are enrolled in credit courses. Uh, and then we have students who are enrolled in the workforce development continuing education uh, wing, which is often non-credit courses. Uh, the non-credit courses are spread over a number of different locations. Uh, including the campuses, uh, but also in Gaithersburg and in Wheaton. Uh, and so it's difficult to figure out uh, how many students in the WDCE part of the college are located in each location. Uh, we can dig into that and we'll get you that information, uh, but that'll take a little while. Uh, there are around 12,000 uh, uh, a little bit more uh, students uh, at the Rockville campus, although many of those 12,000 students also take courses at Germantown uh, and at Tacoma Park Silver Spring. And then there are roughly between 6,000 and 6,500 uh, students on each of the Germantown uh, and the Tacoma Park Silver Spring campuses. Again, that's rough data. Uh, we can try to get you some some details on that. Uh, but again, it's complicated uh, because our students now, I think it uh, it's over a quarter of our students uh, take classes on more than one campus, uh, depending on the semester. Uh, and then 
The technology uh, that was triggered by the pandemic uh, has also created sort of a virtual campus for us as well. Uh, and so we have a lot of students who are taking uh, distance learning uh, and other kinds of uh, high tech courses uh, where they're not on a campus. Uh, and I can get you some information. I can get folks, people, that information to folks too, uh, as well. Uh, I've already alerted and emailed our in institutional uh, people uh, to get us the details. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. And uh, as someone pointed out in chat, we didn't do a proper introduction of you. Could you introduce yourself for those, the, the very few people who might not know who you are, good sir? Uh, hi, I'm Brad Stewart. I'm the vice president and provost of the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus uh, and uh, what they would call the chief academic officer of a, of a unit composed of communications, health sciences, health and physical education and the humanities. Thank you, sir. And Susan Madden, I see your hand. Go for it. I and introduce I yourself, please. Take a stab at the enrollment in general question. I think Brad did a great job of trying to talk about how enrollment is distributed across our campuses and centers. Um, community colleges across the United States did see drops in enrollment um, that got exacerbated, exacerbated by the pandemic. Thankfully, at MCs, we've seemed to have stabilized. Um, we exceeded our projections for the fall. Um, we had growth this spring. Um, and so we think we're on a trajectory to go back up at a slow pace, nothing dramatic or um, wild, um, but that people are returning. I think the challenge is um, when you need uh, cash in your wallet and you need to meet your basic needs, it's really hard to choose school over meeting your basic needs. That's why financial aid and Pell Grants and our foundation are really important and the support that we get from the county to keep our tuition uh, affordable. I appreciate that. And Susan, could you introduce yourself as well? Sure. I'm Susan Madden, and I work in the office of the president at Montgomery College. Thank you, Susan. Really appreciate that. Brad, I see your hand. And as I toss to you, we also got a question about high school students and how they might interact. So if you want to hit on that as well. Yeah, um, actually, um, that's a huge success story uh, for Montgomery College recently. Uh, we have uh, a number of pathways uh, for uh, high school students uh, to enter Montgomery College while they're still high school students. Uh, there are different names for these uh, and depends on sort of how many courses people take. Uh, probably the most successful one, the one we like to brag about most is called Early College. It is now possible for students to leave their high school after they've completed their sophomore year and enter Montgomery College. Uh, in a wide variety of programs from business to health sciences uh, to uh, almost most of our majors are available uh, through early college uh, programs now. And they uh, they come to the campus. Uh, they're part of the Montgomery College camp. They participate uh, in all of the activities that are on campus, except for athletics. That's against the rules, uh, the NJCAA. Um, and then they graduate, if everything goes well, uh, at the same time they receive their high school diploma. Uh, and so if you enter uh, two years ago, uh, we will graduate a number of early college students uh, later this month, and they'll get both their associate's degree uh, and their high school diploma at the same time. Uh, we also have another, uh, several other pathways uh, into the college for high school students uh as well we have um we have early college we have dual enrollment um susan can you help me out with the third one dual enrollment early college middle college middle college <laughs> uh middle college is great we send uh, our faculty members into local high schools uh to teach students uh we do that at northwood and northwest high schools right now Excellent, Brad. Um, I'm, I'm going to read a couple more comments into the, the meeting that have come in since, since the question started. But we did get a question around if we at this point have any projections around student numbers for East Campus and kind of as that develops, what, what are we thinking around that? 
Well, so the uh, building uh, is roughly 55,000 square feet. Uh, it will have uh, 13 regular classrooms, three computer labs, uh, nursing labs, and other health science program labs. Uh, so um, uh, Sherwin uh, Collette can help me out with this too, but we're anticipating once we stand up all of the programs in the program that there might be, uh, we hope, you know, uh, maybe this is a prayer on my part, that there might be a thousand students there uh, in a couple of years. And then the, the overall thing is to create a full-blown campus uh, in the East County as well. Uh, that would be a, a fairly large campus uh, somewhere between um, around the Germantown and Rockville or not the the Germantown and the Tacoma Park campus sizes. It will take us a while to get there. This will be probably this 10-year master plan and one after that uh, to fully realize what that campus would look like. So Vice President Collette, anything you want to add to that? I saw you come off mute, sir. Oh, I just uh, to amplify um, the piece that we begin with the East County Education Center um, that Brad just spoke to, um, and certainly the plans are to, to grow that. We see tremendous opportunity to serve the east por eastern portion of the county more dynamically, but I co-sign with what Brad just shared. Excellent. I'm going to read a couple more things into the, the meeting here. Um, uh, we When we were asking what else could we look at in the future, there was a comment around enhanced marketing to the business community to utilize professional improvement and skills training offered through ITI, management and leadership, small business and entrepreneurship, and other programs in WDCE. Um, there was a, a comment around, we could bring more students to campus as the county addresses rapid bus transport. Um, there was an article shared about the community college drop that has been seen around the, uh, around the country, and then lots of endorsement around more scholarship, student support. Early college has been a stunning success, and early college is fantastic. Um, excellent. There's some great stories being shared about someone locally earned a college associate's degree while still a high school student, and then won a full scholarship to a UMD computer science program. Another question about East County. Is it anticipated that East County will have spaces for integrative learning, say where two or three class sessions across disciplines could come together for shared activities? And the, the comment there is East County appears ripe for innovation. Uh, can we start there from square one? So integrative learning is something that Montgomery College has been doing uh, uh, at least in the 17 years that I've been here through a number of different programs, our honors programs. For example, we have a learning communities program where we pair courses up where the same cohort of students uh, take those. Of course, the health science uh, courses are all integrative uh, because they're a cohort model as well. Um, that's um, less of a, of a uh, building a facility uh, type of situation as a scheduling mm -hmm. uh, facility type of thing. And we're working hard on, uh, we just purchased uh, recently uh, some high-tech uh, software to help us with our scheduling uh, across all of our campuses uh, to make the best use of our facilities uh, as well. So we're working on that too. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. And then the last comment that I don't think I've read in here so far is on the screen. It says, make lifelong learning classes less expensive so they're available to all seniors. Um, and, and Sarah mentioned uh, how spaces can contribute. And UMass Amherst is a great building for integrated work. Excellent comments, questions, and feedback there. Mike, could I ask you to go to the next slide, please? Here's a great one. Provide any comments or questions you haven't had a chance to provide yet. So um, I'm going to actually move us to the next slide just so we can take the deck down and then any dialogue that we need to have. The next slide just shows you how you can continue to get information after we end tonight. So Mike, if you could go one more slide forward. This is, I know it's a, it's a, it's a long um, uh, HTML thing here, but if you look at this, there's a whole master plan website and a frequently asked questions document that's been provided so that as we're getting questions that are coming up a lot, this is where we're putting them all. So if you look at the Montgomery College site and you, you take this down, we've got a very specific plan uh, place that's going to show you where all of this lives. And if I could ask someone on our team to drop this link into the chat, 
because that is a very long one to write down. It'll give folks in the chat an ability to click on it. Um, and so with that, I'm going to take the slide deck down and I'm going to open up one more round here for any questions or comments or thoughts or observations that you didn't get a chance to put in so far. Uh, we got a question here on if we'll be sending out slides or posting them somewhere. Do we know if these slides are going to be shared? And that's not a trick question. The answer yes. can be, we don't know yes, yet. Yes, they will. <laughs> okay. Yes, Michael. Excellent. Thank yes. you, Ray. Yeah. So they'll all be all be shared on the on the website. Excellent. Other questions or comments? Excellent. I know everyone had places they could be tonight and you all chose to spend it here. The level of engagement was incredibly high. I want to grab Kristen's comment that she just dropped in um, uh, uh, about great to provide specific skills training for students with ADHD or executive dysfunction. Thank you for that. And there was a comment around planning special, a session specifically with students, perhaps through the Campus Student Senate. Michael, I know we focused almost exclusively on the community side of things tonight, but I know you've been doing some really extensive on-campus engagement as well. Anything around that you want to you want to give an overview on? Sure. You know, we started the process um, just before spring break, and we began with uh, going to campus, getting into the popular hotspots, putting up some boards, and engaging with students as they pass by. It's what we call intercepts. So we literally stop people in their tracks and ask them questions about what they were doing on campus, what they loved about campus. Uh, what they wanted to improve about campus. And then at that same time, we also launched a student survey. So um, that provided an opportunity for students to give us feedback uh, early in the process. And we're going to continue to kind of engage with the students as we move through the, the next steps of the process. So Excellent. great suggestion. That's and great. And we're all this is for them in the end. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Miriam asked, is there a plan to update the PE building on the Rockville campus? It's over 60 years old. Any look at that building in the plan? On the Germantown campus? This one or said Rock Rockville. Rock but Rock yes. Yep. So in, in the previous master plan, it was indicated that that building needed renovation. Um, so that is still the case. Uh, and the, I believe the condition survey that was recently completed indicated that some improvements needed to be made. So we will definitely be looking hard at that building and understanding what the needs are that drive the, um, uh, drive the need for change in the building, but also what the conditions are and what needs to be improved in order to make it an up-to-date state-of-the-art facility. Excellent. There's a question in here about how much increase have we seen in the number of students over the last 10 years, so kind of from the last planning process, and what percentage of students do we think are currently attending classes 100% in person or close to it versus online? Do we have those general numbers handy? And if there's something we need to provide, we can do that. But I think it's a trend line question. Where are we seeing the growth in students and how many do we think are on campus or virtual versus hybrid? I think that's something we could try to follow up on to generalize. I think it would be, you know, we have to certainly be careful about how broadly yep. we extrapolate that given proximity to the pandemic. We clearly have seen, and the college has offered structured remote and distance learning uh, hybrid classes, which are the structured remote and distance learning options. Yep. Um, and clearly, as we look to continue to expand enrollment, um, that will will be trying to meet students uh, needs based on preferences and schedules and as Brad noted earlier um, students are um, experiencing our offerings across uh, various campuses so they're less bound by the geography in those ways and the technologies and additional affordance in facilitating that as well it's excellent it, it is also possible to earn uh, degrees in certain disciplines from Montgomery College uh entirely online via distance learning i believe we're up to about nine different uh majors in that uh, i think the last one that got approved by the board of trustees uh and is off to uh the state to be approved is communications excellent um ray has helpfully dropped a direct link to the faq page in the chat as well if anyone's looking for that um, it was an observation made that many of the early college students are on campus and also STEM or art or other courses that have labs, studios, often pull in more face-to-face. -face. 
the question about online student percentage needs to be broken down. I am taking science classes with labs that must be taken in person. So online is not always an option. But thank you for clarifying that. There, there are clearly some that that require that, that in-person element. There's a, a question here about, there was a proposal to build the full conference and meeting center on the Germantown campus. Would it be more feasible to include that type of facility for East County in order to attract more businesses to participate and use MC? The type of facilities we have may need to be more business-like. Um, for example, the USG building two conference and meeting rooms. Anything being looked at around conference rooms or meeting spaces as part of an FMP? Yes, absolutely. Um, there, some of the early conversations we've had on campus with stakeholders indicated that there were was a need for certain larger spaces to hold events, uh, and certain projects in the past have proposed uh, conferencing facilities as well as catering facilities, and those have been deferred to later projects. So they're currently included in projects that are projected within the master plan and not completed. And then, Michael, I would also note that um, as we ready the East County Education Center, there is a uh, large space intended to um, facilitate community use and be more flexible for larger gatherings. Um, I also would uh, be remiss if I didn't underscore that as part of the, the German, Germantown campus, we have the Pinckney Innovation Complex uh, and its mission in supporting the college is around uh, attracting critical uh, businesses around life sciences and technology um, and certainly ongoing work. And I know that uh, I believe Gail Wasserman and John Compton were on the, on the call who um, are the chair and incoming chair of that uh, that board. And so that's a vibrant partnership as we look at opportunities to both attract business and create expanded partnerships for students and faculty and staff to engage the business community. So uh, the, the types of facility uses and as part of the facilities master planning work will certainly uh, be engaging uh, that board, the, the, the abbreviated to be called the PIC MC board um, in, in their visioning and their uh, ideas around, um, you know, how we, we revision forward as well. So some of those elements that you asked could be accounted for there too. Thank you, Sherwin. There are a couple of things in here. There was an observation that students may be taking classes across campuses because the course options may not be available at their home campus. Um, and then some some feedback that a full conference center could be awesome. MC could be a leader in bringing people together to solve challenges. Um, there is a conference center in the bioscience building on the Germantown campus is an observation here. Some agreement here about the conference space. Thank you for the pick MC call out, Sherwin. You got, you got that in the chat as well. Team, what else are we missing here? There's no rush, but we also wanna respect folks' time. This has been a very high level of engagement. As a reminder, both the recording from tonight and the deck will be posted to the website. So if there are stakeholders who weren't here tonight that you work with and they want a sense of what's going on, please direct them to the recording and to our next meetings as well. Um, uh, as someone said here, if you want us to go all the way up to Germantown for conferences, we'll need some good bus transportation from the Shady Grove Metro. What else team, are we missing anything else here? There is a comment here about uh, the hot spot idea was great. Did you also consider areas where there are cold spots? And yes, we did. As part of that engagement, we actually looked for the areas that we call them cobwebs, places that are a little dusty and, and tumbleweeds rolling through them. How can we make those spaces better, more engaging and more useful to the institution? So, yep, we did do that. I love that. Michael, from your perspective, anything we need to follow up on? Anything you, you weren't getting out of tonight that you need for your planning? I feel like it was pretty comprehensive, but let me know. Oh, no, we have a lot of great input here, a lot of great things to consider, and some new perspectives to, to, um, to look at. Mr. Collette, you open tonight. Anything you want to offer as we close? Anything that we missed? You're on mute, sir. Uh, there we go. The best part already said. Um, I would just I would just say that um, uh, thanks again for everyone for coming. But more importantly than that, please know that uh, as we pointed to the community 
specific engagements um, that are coming. We look forward to seeing you there um, and certainly spread the word. Um, well, it's a fun time tonight. So, you know, let more people know and come on out uh, as we engage over the next few weeks. We really do want to hear from you. And I, I saw and heard the comments as they uh, were there related to uh, some sentiments about uh, not listening to the community. Uh, we're here because we want to hear from you. We value your perspectives. Um, it's always at the end of time as we bring these things forward, how do we prioritize and then ultimately help them fuel you know, the work that will go into budgets and that stuff. But at this point in the process, it's about our aspirations and dreams and we want you to dream with us. I appreciate that. That's a great note to end on. Jennifer, I got your note in the chat about the, the, the pool and the competition pool. So we'll make sure that is in the notes as well. Thank you all for being here. Check out the recording, spread the word, and we'll see you at our next meeting. Thank you all. Enjoy your evening. Thank you.